A very good evening and welcome once again to Terrace Talk. And a busy show lined up with us uh, here tonight. And for our listeners, uh, we'll have one of the greatest midfielders of all time in studio later on in the second hour of this programme, the great and mighty Darrow O'Shea. It was a busy weekend uh, in football, in Harling. Of course, a great win by our hurlers yesterday. Likewise, Kerry versus Monaghan is the drive for five over. We have five National League games won. And we talk about Dublin's drive for five. Well, we have five under our belt. It might be the National League. Uh, and if you were at any of those games over the weekend, uh, please contact us tonight. You can call us on 066 7123 Text on 083 300 300. Also on WhatsApp, Terrace Talk. On Facebook, or tweet at Terrace Talk RK. Terrace Talk at Radio Kerry.ie. That's where we start this evening. I'm delighted to have in studio, uh, once again, Liam Brosnan, Dini Long, and uh, I won't say he's a new kid in the block. He's contributed before to Terrace Talk. He's a former Rocky, former county championship winner, and, uh, well, they did a long journey in the club uh, situation with the Rock as well. Finn on Ryan. You're all very welcome to Terrace Talk, lads. Evening, Tim. Uh, Liam Brosnan, first of all, congratulations. You... Be, you had a win yesterday in Brosna. That, <laughs> does that uh, put a safety net into your tenor as manager of Brosna? I suppose, I suppose it does, Tim. It keeps me there for another week anyway. But we were lucky. We were building snowmen. I think if it was a dreadful, competition... Dreadful conditions, I take it? Yeah, but it, it started, I suppose, at about a quarter to eleven and within within a 40 minutes the place was just covered. covered. But we we got a, a good half an hour under our belt, so that we rushed on, to, rushed on to Clarny then. That won't really be a problem if you can deliver a North Kerry championship to them. So th- No pressure, Tim, I suppose, no. No pressure. Yeah. Liam, let's talk about the Kingdom yesterday. Um, the fifth National League game, winning in a row. Uh, what's your take? Yeah, I suppose, look, uh, yesterday we were kind of up against uh, a Monaghan team. We were very physical. Uh, the last couple of outings against Monaghan didn't probably come come out to... We didn't come out the right, the right end. So it was always going to be a tough one. I think conditions as well added, added to the to the, to the the whole thing. Uh, first of all, I must congratulate the hurlers because the, they're in a league final next week and the conditions that they played in yesterday... Were a lot more difficult. Were a lot more hurlers. difficult, yeah. yeah. But getting back getting back to our, our footballers... Yeah, look, I suppose it's a case of job done. Um, the one thing I did found, find yesterday, Tim, was that, you know, I don't know, is it just the way that we're getting used to our, our young boys, but I never felt we were in danger you know, throughout the whole game even when Monaghan took the, the two point lead it was in the 50th minute you know, we never seemed to we, I, I always That's thought myself we could come back in with the previous four wins I suppose it has. It has built. It has built a lot of confidence in the team and the supporters. You know that we could. We could have. A, and and especially Tim, when you look, we would know Paul Ganey and know David Clifford. So we were saying, where are you going to get our scores from? But we still, you know, we still were very confident that yeah, we could come back and we could we could snatch this. And 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 they did in the end. And we had a lot of good performances. Very impressed again yesterday with I think our full back Jack Sherwood. Uh, it was the last when he went off with with the leg injury. All right, but I thought he had a, he had a very good game there yesterday. Um, Paul Murphy, ro- the middle of the field. Look, we can name we'll name them all in the next in the next hour or so. But look, overall, Tommy Welsh. Overall, I think yesterday was was another one to put in put in the bag. And um, it'll be interesting now. We have one leg in the fi- in, in the final. I think we are in the final. And I think our big test will be above in Crow Park. Peter doesn't want to mention Crow Park because playing it down. two games. He's playing it down. Yeah. But I do think that will be the big test of our of our uh, our young boys. Dinny Long, um, first half, uh, you could say at times we struggled to break down the defensive side. We weren't getting the scores either. A huge threat uh, for Monaghan inside in that full forward line was Conor McManus. He gave a tough time to Peter Crowley in that first half, part of that first half. Yeah, uh, looked to be, uh, you know, well on top of Peter, particularly uh, <coughs> before he picked up the injury. Uh, McManus' injury looked that, you know, he got a kick in the back of the leg or something and obviously it curtailed him a bit. Uh, yeah, I suppose, like, uh, Kerry looked reasonably good. They played with an awful lot of hunger. I think that's the big thing in the last four or five games that, you know, their, their work rate is huge. Uh, I thought the overall standard was, wasn't great. I thought that obviously the conditions on the foot conditions after the snow were probably difficult enough. But overall, you know, I think before the league started, and if you said Kerry would go five games unbeaten against the five teams that they've played, I think most people would have said they wouldn't agree with you, but it's, they're uh, possibly in the final, I think they are in the final. So, like Liam says there, it looks like being Dublin 
will be the opponents. I think Dublin will win their remaining games. Their score difference is greater than Mayo and Galway and Tyrone. So I think that it will be a Kerry Dublin final. And I suppose that's what the J are looking for, and that's what all the Kerry supporters and Dublin supporters are looking for. Uh, Fanon, I suppose the same as the lad said, it's it's good times in Kerry football, but uh, I suppose we have to analyse that game. Mm. Um, difficult nowadays, Fanon, that the way that team set up. Uh, we can be defensive ourselves, Kerry. Likewise, Monaghan, very hard to break down these these walls of defence. Yeah, um, and just before I, I get into answering that question, I would like to say that from the management point of view yesterday, Peter Keane has exceeded expectations. Maybe not his objectives, which is a different thing, because there still remains a lot of question marks, and I agree with the lads in picking up a number of points in terms of uh, our defence yesterday. There was, OK, we were flat in the first half, um, and we picked it up at the start of the second half, and there was more intensity. Now, I do believe that Dan Moynihan and Gavin O'Brien certainly picked it up in the second half, and that contributed a lot to the victory. I think there was, after Stephen O'Brien got that um, point that brought us level, I think, after, from, was it the 4th to the 64th minute or something like that, Gavin O'Brien caught a ball in the middle of the field dire- from, directly from that kick-out. Right, yeah. and, he's, and then he, he delivered a beautiful ball to Sean Shea, who passed it diagonally into Dara Moynihan, who kicked a beautiful ball. I think there was massive impetus at that particular time. I know that Monaghan went up and scored another point, but I think that was the basis of the victory. As regards your question, as regards, um, I suppose, you're talking about, again, defensiveness and um, philosophies and breaking it down... Um, all I can say really is about that is I think if a team goes down that route, um, from, my, from my particular perspective anyway, you're not setting out a kind of a positive perspective for the team. And if I could use an analogy from another court, take for example what Jose Marino did at Manchester United. He tried to change the culture of the philosophy and brought a negative style of play. Uh, he, we here in Kerry are not used to that. It's not part of our tradition. It's not part of our culture. And we will never be able to play that game well. So in terms of breaking down a team, that's fine. But the thing about it is that when it came to the rule change there and they decided, is that right, that they were not going to get, go ahead with the hand pass rule, is that right? On the basis that you can't break down a mass, de- mass defence otherwise. Now that is a critical question. All right, how do you do it? And it remains to be seen. Are we looking for some creative genius of coaches to arrive in the scene in, a, in, in, in an era where there's a malaise in the game? I don't know. It's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah, and a lot of teams are setting up. Um, I suppose the big thing, and you mentioned him there, that when we probably didn't give enough ball to Tommy Walsh in the first half. A few balls went in to the, right, to the left or the right. But when we hit it uh, correctly, like Tomas O'Shea's style or Paul Galvin, that diagonal, he's very difficult to mark. Yeah, Tim, and I think the one thing, and we just made the point there, that when we broke a pace, we were able to pick out Tommy with, with, with better ball. When, when, we, when, when Monaghan probably got back and set up their defensive structure, we found it hard to, to, to get get a ball into Tommy and they were the balls that were kind of hitting into the corners and hitting to the sides but if you look at all Tommy's marks that he got yesterday in front of the goals they were all from attacks that we that when we turned the ball that we broke a pace and there was space then for the, and I think that's that's one way in, in breaking down mass defence is the that, ball over the is wall. put the ball over the wall or you have to break a pace break before they can get back and I do think that's one thing Peter has has done this year with the players that we have you know the Tom Sullivans um, the, the Paul Murphys even the Gavin Crowleys and these fellas the Brian Begley's the Peter Crowleys Jack Sherwood they're all breaking up the field at pace and I think that and when, when we did that in the second half we seemed to open open gaps a bit a bit easier and a bit more but I do think that's, that is one of the, the main reasons why Kerry are moving so well at the moment look if we look Tyrone put up a, a, a defensive structure against us Galway and you, you were just on about Ga- do not, that it's, it's not it's not our nature to do that and I think that's where Galway are struggling at the moment it's not, it's not their nature either to be playing that defensive structure and it's not suiting them They're, it's alien to their players but and Kerry seem to balance but both Kerry seem to balance both yeah um, Dinny can, can we talk about the Monaghan goalkeeper yesterday uh, If there, talk about a guy having a horrible 70 minutes it was one tactic and it, whether it was a tactic or he was afraid to kick it out into the middle he went short with a lot to Ryan Wiley and, and Colin Walsh with the, with the short kick outs and he sent the back came in at different times as well uh, for them um 
delaying the kickouts. Yeah, I thought it was very... The crowd, the crowd really got on top of Yeah, I thought it was very noticeable and, and it affected his kickouts as well. And I think that, you know, where he was blown fairly well out of all proportion in the championship last year, I thought in the last 20 minutes yesterday, he led to, to, to Mullen having a very poor last 20 minutes because not alone was he delaying the kick-out, but he wasn't finding any Mullen player. And, you know, Kerry won an awful lot of, of the of the last 20 minutes kick-outs. So, overall, I think he would have been better off. I don't think there was any great fielding in the middle of the field. And I thought that, you know, with his big long kick of 17, 80 yards... You put him past midfield? that's what he should have applied and I thought the sideline were very slow obviously to get that message into him but I honestly believe that he did contribute to, to Mayo having a, or to Mullen having a very poor last 20 minutes because he drew the crowd on him he he, he, he appeared to be nervous he appeared to be to lose his confidence with the kick out and uh, they were all over the place for the last 20 minutes and you know the one thing that Kerry have at the moment once Kerry break no matter who breaks the chances are they're going to get a score and you know Tom Sullivan does Pace. it and you know that, mm. that's that's a crucial weapon to Kerry that if you break and whoever breaks if he's capable of taking a score well then the opposition have a huge problem because if you were depending you know if you like I suppose Monaghan were depending an awful lot on McManus you know I was talking to somebody today and they said a one man fo- forward line one is quite win. is quite easy to mark and you won't win much with it. Now Kerry are lucky in the sense that their half backs, uh, their midfielders, uh, and particularly whatever six forwards they wind up with, most of them will be capable of scoring. So that's a big bonus for Kerry going forward. Um, Fanon, the thing we alluded to there was that he went short with kickouts. Uh, Rory Began, not a lot of trust in his midfield, and probably a testament to Kerry they were crowding that middle diamond. Yeah, if you have a goalkeeper behaving like that, it creates massive uncertainty, and it, it engulfs the team. And the thing is that everybody, even even the novices in the stand, could pick up. And I, and I, I can't for the life of me, I, I couldn't understand why he continued with those antics throughout the game. He didn't change. He didn't change. Everybody's talking about it today. And like Malachi O'Rourke uh, must be giving him carte blanche to do what he is uh, doing. But I know if it was the, on the opposite side, you know, Peter Keane wouldn't certainly be allowing that. He certainly wouldn't be having that type of goalkeeper. I mean, for me anyway, I mean, when he was up towards, in, in our parallel ground towards the end, I, I feel that a goalkeeper's uh, primary objective is a stop shot. Now, I know the game has changed and they have to be very good now at kickouts and make sure that they uh, actually hit their men. But coming out the field and creating an extra bit of space, I think, myself, I don't like that aspect of the game at all. Because what you have, you have there's a tendency to get the ball back. Because when a, a man is in possession of the ball, he's looking up, he sees the options. Now, the thing is that, uh, you know... Um, does he go for the safe option all the time? And when he brings the ball back, you will hear the groans in the stadium everywhere. I think and too this, adventurous. Yeah, and this is the great disconnect now between the public and the players. The players are in his route. It can understand the objectives from the manager. Play it safe because if he loses the ball or anything like that, it's identified as a stat at the end of the game and just talks about it for training. So there's a big problem there in actually moving the game. And it's not just Monaghan that have that. Um, a text just in, uh, Dinny, I suppose it's, it's, it alludes to both uh, you and Fanon that the panel has never been stronger having two Rockies on the panel tonight. Would you agree with that? Well, I suppose the, <laughs> the, the Rockies always claim that they're very strong, and I suppose with two fellas on the panel, I suppose we're hopefully doing our best. Great stuff. Uh, lads, you're staying with us. We'll have plenty more after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. I have Finn on Ryan, Dinny Long and Liam Brosnan in studio as we discuss yesterday's happenings in Fitzgerald Stadium. Those comments coming through to us. Uh, congratulations to both teams yesterday. It was a good day for the county, but a special congratulations to the Kerry and Meath hurlers for playing in those conditions. You could hardly see them from the stand and the snow was falling and that comes from uh, Mossy. A great win, lads. A very good result in horrible conditions, but fair play to the boys for digging down and getting that win and fair play to the supporters for getting behind them. And and, uh, of course, if you were in Killarney yesterday for the hurlers win over Meath, uh, please uh, do not hesitate in texting us tonight. We'd love to hear from you. Um, a text in here, Liam. You can feel this with your serious pair of hands. Uh, too many defenders going forward, clogging up 
uh, the attacking half of the field for Kerry, and that comes from Andy and Killarney. Well, uh, yeah, that can, that can happen. But like, there there is a fine line between between clogging up and breaking out of defence with with a ball. And I think Kerry, I know I, I'd be happy enough at the moment the way Kerry are playing, coming out of defence with the ball. I think with the, with the last couple of years we were slow and cumbersome coming out coming out of defence. Now we we have legs and we have fellas that can drive on. But Amber alluded to it yesterday in the commentary uh, when we were doing the commentary that uh, at times our sometimes our wing backs were ahead of Shawnee Shea. And then when a defender had it in an attacking part of the field, uh, kind of ball was turned over and went the other way. That Are you a forward when you're clogged up? A defend- uh, uh, I suppose a wing back can run off a shoulder of any into space, kick it over the bar. That, yeah. But are you an attacker when you're hidden, hit, hidden against the wall and we lost the ball and it was turned over? Because they were, I, I suppose we couldn't exploit the space that we should have with the forwards. That's what Ambrose was saying during Yeah, Cup. well I suppose a lot, of look, a lot of our forwards... Well, you we put the likes of David Clifford and the Paul Gainey. Would you agree with your back half-backs in. ahead of your half-hour line? Well, I thought yesterday, no, Shawnee, Shawnee could do with these two two weeks of a break. I thought Shawnee was a bit tired yesterday. I know he kicked he kicked what he kicked and stuff like that. But I was looking at the UCC boys, like even even Brian Begley and these and these guys. They look tired. They're after a hard a come, a lot of football. So And even at times, Stephen, Stephen O'Brien was kind of behind the ball and and I think that's the way Peter kind of sets it up that if, if you're if you're a, a corner forward and, and you walk back and you you do your job there's there's nothing wrong then with the likes of Tom Sullivan or the Paul Murphys and these fellas pushing forward into into position because like Tom Tom Sullivan can kick a point just as good as Stephen O'Brien Gavin O'Crowley I've seen Gavin doing it you know so I'd have I'd have no issue with that that if they go into space the only thing you just said no space yeah these guys were going into cul-de-sacs well, if they're going to into into colour sex, is a, is, a, is a different it's story. Just coming from the commentary now that we're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, but I didn't. I, to be honest, I didn't see a whole pile that yesterday. My top, a lot of the, lot of the movement that the boys were doing and stuff like that was grand in my side of it. Between you, say he uh, saw. Yeah, well, the, well, the one thing I thought was quite noticeable, really, was that uh, I thought a lot of the Kerry players. When I say a lot of the Kerry players, now I mean maybe three or four Kerry players. I think they were passing for the sake of passing. They were passing to a man, you know, a couple of yards away. And I think, you know, and I don't know the tactics that the present Kerry management are using, but it appears that it's all about work rate and positions means nothing exactly. in yeah, the yeah, modern game. game. So if you take uh, Stephen O'Brien uh, was, you know, way back practically in his own full back line. I think the Kerry forwards are going back an awful lot. And like you said, when they're very far back, you can have the Kerry half back line forward. outside them. Which, you know, in theory doesn't sound right, but unfortunately that's the way the all the teams are playing. And I suppose the the most noticeable thing about Kerry for me anyway is that Kerry really have gone to a, the new system in the GA which is work get behind the ball they're putting as many men behind the ball as everybody else and I think maybe if anything that's the the one worry I'd have about Kerry going forward there aren't that many teams better than them probably Dublin are the only team at the moment that, that looks better than them we don't know about Galvin we don't know about Mayo so I think I'd like to see Kerry kick a bit more I think there's too much shot passing for uh, and by shot passing you're letting teams clog space and then you have no space for good forwards to work and I think that's a handicap for Kerry going forward This is open to all the panel before I go to Fanon, I know Fanon spoke already <coughs> about uh, Rory Began. Hi Tim uh, What's the panel's opinion on the standard of goalkeeping with Kerry at the moment? Enjoying your programme, that comes from Michael Brosnan in Skibbereen. Seeing as I was with you Denny, um, any take on that? Yeah, well, I think Ryan hasn't done a whole pile Yeah, I think it? young Ryan is, is very new to it and uh, you know, he plays outfield for his club and uh, I suppose he is now starting a, a total new career as the Kerry senior fullback or the Kerry senior goalkeeper. A difficult job enough, you know, and uh, he has made a few mistakes. He has repeated a few mistakes in all his games. But, you know, I think by persisting, if they're happy that he is the best goalkeeper and, you know, most observers and supporters in Kerry will tell you that he is the best goalkeeper. He's a big man. He has a good kick out. He has an awful lot going for him. But we have seen a few mistakes. You have to accept them for for a young man. And, you know, he'll learn by them. And I'm sure the management will be looking at that from the point of view. They'll, 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 they'll correct that with him. And, you know, he is... A 
obviously very keen to make that goal goalkeeping position his own and if he's that dedicated which I believe he is then there's no doubt he'll be able to tidy up on that but he has made a few mistakes I think the one yesterday that was going back over his head you know I suppose you would expect him to have held that. He was lucky in the sense that Peter Crowley got in behind him and, and put it away. It was at a crucial stage in the game, but I would I wouldn't I wouldn't knock him for it. I think that that he they'll persist with him, which I think is right, and I think he'll learn from it. He's young and it's a big responsibility, you know, being a Kerry senior goalie. Yeah, and another text here on the same thing. Uh, Tim, I think uh, Kerry have more uh, goalkeeping problems than Monaghan. That comes from James. Um we spoke about Rory Began and likewise uh, you know Dinny there spoke about the Kerry this is a very good keeper that has come from minor level uh, to under 20 under 21 Fanon. and it's a case of gro- we just said it the keeper is such an important position now in Gaelic football and uh, Shane Ryan will uh, be under scrutiny because he's the keeper no different to the rest of the players No uh, but if you're ever if you're going to blood anybody you, you know the league is the perfect place to do it um, are we going to kill him now because of a few mistakes that wouldn't be the right thing to do. It may be the case that he's a bit over-anxious. That's what I would think. I know his quality. I've seen it. It's top class. That just doesn't fade. And I just think that we just should give him time. He knows himself. He's around a good bit now. And he will be, I'm sure, uh, you know, he will be determined to make up for that in the future games. And I would, I, I would uh, plead with Peter to just park those any criticism for a while and give him a clear run for the whole league. Yeah, definitely needs the experience. Uh, now we'll get uh, the Monaghan uh, perspective, lads. I should have former Grace with Monaghan on the line. That is Tommy Freeman. Uh, good evening, Tommy, and welcome to Terrace Talk. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Well, Tommy, uh, a long trip, I suppose, down from Monaghan to the Kingdom. Um, you are taking yesterday's game. A lot of good things to probably take out of the Monaghan's performance. Uh, but at this stage, you're, at the, I suppose, uh, laying at the bottom of the table. Uh, it would be nice to get the points as well. Yes, I was actually uh, down doing commentary with my, our own local radio station at the match yesterday. Yeah, uh, I, I think Monaghan can take good heart out of the performance, first of all, from yesterday's game. I suppose it's been uh, our, the last two uh, performances against Gaul and Tyrone especially has been uh, under power. And I'm sure Maliki would have addressed that. But I was down yesterday and I thought Monaghan uh, played very, very well. I thought they were, uh, they were on top in the first half with uh, Stephen O'Hanlon and Conor McMahon uh, causing the defence uh, uh, all sorts of problems. So uh, Monaghan, Monaghan could take good heart out of their performance from, uh, from yesterday, even though it was disappointing not coming away with, with the pint, and we, we find ourselves now at, at the bottom of the table. But uh, listen, as I said, uh, the performance was one fact that there would have been nothing to improve on, and I, I think they'll be happy with that. Um, a lot of uh, be it the critics or pundits out there, Tommy, are saying that uh, you're a one man band as far as the forwards are uh, very dependent or over dependent on your full forward, Conor McManus. Yeah, well, I suppose this, and everybody ha- has their has their take on that, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. I suppose this, and there's no there's no hiding it. Monin does depend seriously a lot on Connor, especially uh, for the scores. Now, you know, if if it was to lose Connor, uh, you know, uh, through injury, and you would uh, you'd probably struggle for scores. But listen, we have a nice round team now, and I suppose. Uh, we have a lot of walkers in, in the forward line especially, but, you know, we found uh, another young man there from the Carrollton Cross Club in Stephen O'Hanlon, and, and uh, I thought himself and Connor yesterday combined yeah, very well, well to, to, yeah. together, especially in the first half. When, when, the, when the space was there and the ball was given in the first time, they, they were causing the likes of Peter Crowley and the whole full-back line of Kerry uh, problems. Um. Monaghan, you know, for the rest, I suppose the preparation or the foundation for the championship is the league and you want to get as far as possible. But now you're struggling to keep um, your Division 1 status because in the post-match interview yesterday with Maliki O'Rourke, he said, look, we want to stay here because you're up against top-class teams and that's how you get better. So there's pressure now on Monaghan straight away? Uh, there is pressure. And, um, you know, Division 1 football is where every county team wants to be. And I'm sure Monaghan is, is, is still hopeful that they can... Uh, Achieved that come come the end of the league, it just it wasn't you know we got off to a great start and beating the Dubs and Clonus and I suppose just the performances then away to was common and at home like uh, Gaul and especially away to Throne was, was just they wouldn't be happy they were so unlike Monaghan they were given so a uh, possession away handy and Monaghan you know the last five six years was known for a team that hold on to possession and, and hard team to break down and. 
But, you know, at the end of the day, Monaghan is struggling with, with injuries. And for the size of a county, you know, we have five men that was, uh, you know, starting your team last year. And they were on the bench. You know, the likes of Conor Boyd was a great one. He got injured against what's common. The likes of Kieran Hughes, Niall Cairns, Kieran Duffy. You know, so we can't afford really to have those amount of boys out injured at the minute. But, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a massive game now against uh, Calvin now in, in two weeks' time. And, you know, it's, it's a big game for both for both teams. So hopefully Monon will uh, be uh, getting down to work and studying on that and hopefully come away with full points. But just on yesterday's game, I suppose I have to give yourself, Kerry, great credit. I think uh, your keen manager, he, he, he really pushed up on Monaghan's kickouts and I think Monaghan has struggled then. Yeah, you know, we huge Rory problems, yeah. Had, yeah, it causes severe problems and then Rory headed up end up going long and we kind of had lost most of them uh, battles in midfield. Uh, finally, before I let you go, Tommy, uh, of the teams, I know it's early days, it's, it's only March, uh, of all the teams you've seen in the league and that, uh, who are closest to the dubs at the minute? Well, yeah, it's, well, I suppose you'd have to say Kerry at the minute, you know, you are the only team at the minute that's unbeaten. Uh, Mayo had started off well, but they've kind of, uh, you know, they've suffered... Uh, a couple of defeats there and I suppose they'd be disappointed after losing the goal but listen I suppose Kerry you'd have to say is the closest to the Dubs at the minute it was an enthralling uh, game which was myself in Dublin there on the Saturday night on the lights it was, it was a great game of ball and I suppose you did, you used to be looking you used to have a few injuries ready. you know David Moran didn't feature yesterday Paul Ganey then you have the likes of uh, yeah. Clifford to come back and James O'Donoghue so you know you have plenty of firepower still to come back so I, I think uh, Peter King will be very happy where he is at the minute with, with Kerry and when he gets his full squad back definitely is will, uh, is will, should be fit to push the dub there or thereabouts come, uh, come September 10. Great stuff Tommy thanks a million for coming on Terrace Talk and uh, the best of luck for the rest of the league thank you thank you bye bye of course that was Tommy Freeman uh, former Monaghan great and I just get to one comment before we take our next break uh, well done to Tim on commentary uh, with Ambrose yesterday uh, very enjoyable as always congratulations to both the Kerry Hurlers and footballers yesterday and best of luck to the Hurlers next weekend a game that we're covering live from Ennis on Sunday that comes from Mary in Abedorney we now take a break Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry brought to you in association with brianjames.ie leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk as we discuss uh, yesterday's game between Kerry and Monaghan. Uh, I suppose a snow drenched, for want of a better word, Fitzgerald Stadium. Uh, and before the break, we were speaking to Tommy uh, Freeman, of course, the former Monaghan player. Um, Liam, he just said it there that Kerry are in a very good place. That could Peter Keane have written this script? You know, he's trying to... He didn't know what players were probably available from league to league game to league game because Sigerson and players injured and that. It's all happening in the right ways. How long will this go on for? Well, I hope it'll go on for a long, a long but, more but like time. You'd have but you'd to say that it's, 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 he's ticking all the boxes. He's, really, he's right? ticking all the boxes, yeah. And even yesterday, again, you know, starting Kevin McCarthy and bringing in Brian O'Begley again, he's not afraid to make changes. You look at the subs that he used, used yesterday. Tomas O'Shea came on for Jack Sherwood. Would would the last uh, regime of management would they have made? Would they have made that change, taken off of uh, taken off a of full back and bringing on a corner forward? It was usually the opposite. Uh, in right for Griffin, Graham Sullivan, Begley, Foley, Crawley. He's not. A, he's not afraid to make changes. And you know, bring him Jack Sherwood. Had confidence in Jack Sherwood coming back. So, like you said, he has he has ticked all the boxes. Tommy Welsh. You no, know, we and and yes, we still haven't seen David Clifford. You know, we haven't seen the best of Paul Gain yet. We haven't seen James O'Donoghue. You know, so he's. I think. I think deep down, he mightn't say it, but I think deep down, uh, he kind of knows he's in. A, he's in a good place. And look, uh, are our defence? We talk about. Fair enough. We, we had, had spoke about Shane Ryan. He's a man coming from minor on the twenty on to the senior. Peter Keane is sticking with him. Uh, you know, different leagues. We had a rotation system. Let's talk about the backs. Peter Crowley. It's not new to him. He's played there before. But how, how's Peter Crowley and Jack Sherwood and Breen Obiogli getting on in that full back line? Look, Tim. I suppose. Look, yesterday Breen Obiogli struggled with uh, Young Hanlon. He is a good good footballer, good footballer, lively footballer. Yeah, and most but, cornerbacks would. Yeah, but look, if you look, I think we. We, we can't get carried away with, with a Kerry defence because you look at the Dublin defence like Johnny Cooper we're, I listened to a couple of fellas now today we still have no man markers we still have no man markers to be honest Tim I don't think there's many man markers in the country anymore you know, if you look at other teams, the Johnny Coopers, the the Kieran Sullivans, all these fellas, they're athletes. They're they're fellas that will run up and down the field all day for you. And was there and a case in point there now 
uh, with um, Conor McManus yesterday. He was doing a bit of damage in the first 10 minutes. Then went mid- midways through the half. He got a ball. He was surrounded by three. He, he came out injured out of it. Yeah. But they isolated him. They surrounded him. Surrounded to him. A, we, to, to yeah. a turnover. And the only way you can do that, Tim, is with legs. And that's why we're doing it. And we keep harping on about it that we need legs in the defence. If you beat the Brian O'Begley's, the Tom Sullivan's, the Gavin Crowley's, they're quick enough to recover. With the last couple of years, we couldn't do that. And we struggled. Last year, above with Conor McManus, above, above in Monaghan, we struggled. And the same with Andy Morn, above in the All Ireland semi final a couple of years ago. We struggled to, to get to get bodies close to him because we didn't have the pace. Now Peter has come across this thing that Paul Murphy, you know, if, if you watch Paul, Paul you know, he had a fantastic game again yesterday. Paul's the kind of a guy, he's a double teamer if you look at the basketball terms, that the minute the wing, the wing back or the wing forward gets the ball or the corner forward gets the ball, Paul is, Paul is there within seconds. It's, you know, or it's, Tom the timing. With it. it's, it's, it's the as timing. if you have a target to get there within five seconds to this player. Exactly, yeah. So I wouldn't be getting carried away about man markers. We're always going to come across one or two forwards Hours that are going to have a good day and stuff like that, but you try to minimise them. So yesterday we minimised Conor McManus. Uh, you know, you're not going to stop him from scoring at all, but at least if you can minimise to, to a couple of points, you'll be doing well. Dinny Long, would you agree with uh, the game has changed? You going back in the day that uh, Jimmy Dean used to do a job on uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy. Uh, I suppose in later years we talk about Seamus Minehan if there was a problem in a certain e- area of the the attacking uh, part of the field by the opposition. Seamus Minehan was the man marker. Likewise, Mark O'Shea followed up to to be, and we'll have his brother later on. By the way, Dara in studio. That these were the guys you go. But the game has changed, like Liam says. Will you get away without man markers now because it's, it's more of a unit. You get there, if a guy's good, you get there, get bodies around him, turn over, ball cleared. Yeah, I think that the day of the, the marking and hurling in football is gone. Uh, we see that with, with the scores. Uh, like Liam has said there, uh, you know, the Kelly full back line. What you have now is that the likes of Paul Murphy uh, playing at centre-back, it's how you read the game. And that applies right across all your players, even your players coming on. If you have players who can read the situation now, I know that was always there, but it's even more important now because if any player gets isolated now, right, you have to have players back to cover that particular player. So that's what Kerry have been doing. That's what this present Kerry management... So you're saying that Paul Murphy has cover back to help him. That's basically yeah, what everybody's He wouldn't be your natural centre-back, to be no, fair. He'd be a wing-back. No. Well, you know, yeah. I, I, I honestly believe he won't wind up centre-back. My honest opinion is that he won't be the Kerry centre-back come the, le- the later part of the championship. But that's my opinion. Now, what I'm saying is that at the moment, Kerry have... All their players are very fit, they look very fit, and what they're doing is that they're all covering and they're all backs when it's required and they're, you know, a lot of them going forward, maybe too many of them when they're going forward. But overall, the game has changed so much, Tim, that there's no such thing now as markers. Markers are gone, it's athletes, like Liam was saying, and you must be able to read the game and get back when you have the ball. Off the ball now is as important as with the ball. Even without, correct, correct. Uh, those comments coming through to us, uh, This you might take this one up, uh, fin, uh, Finnan. Uh, our biggest uh, fall, uh, fault was not clearing a path for players running into the Monaghan half. Certainly offer an option ahead uh, for the player, but get out of the way uh, if not needed. We also uh, took the ball into contact with um, the ball exposed, which will result in turnovers during the summer. Dubs rarely take the ball into contact and uh, took too long with the kickouts as well. That comes from John and Tralee. What do you think of that comment? Yeah, I mean, um, we talked about pace earlier and there's pace in the back line. I thought that um, Gavin Crowley got caught a couple of times like that, you know. And <clears throat> the thing is that um, when, uh, when when the backs have the ball, when they're, they're right up here, the thing is that I think with, with Tom Sullivan in particular, he, was a, he, he trained as a forward, he was natural forward, so there's a natural instinct for him to move forward. But the thing about it is that the game has gone so quickly now that it's only a split second where you can just think and all of a sudden you could be caught in a jungle and caught up. So If you're slow now, you're cut out, aren't you? You're completely you're, you're cut out. And you're seen by supporters and likewise players, I mean, management. I mean, in the space of 10, 10 yards or a split second, you're in quickly. So you have to think quickly of what's ahead as well. You can't be running blind all the time. So, for example, when they get the ball, say, what's ahead? You know, I agree with what uh, Dinny Dare said as well about the man marking. Is that it's a dead concept because it's the, the weakness in the particular concept is that if you beat your man, 
you've created space for something else. And very few coaches are going to take that up now. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, Liam, uh, those comments are flying in and thank you very much uh, to our listeners tonight. Get through as many as we can. Uh, why is Brian Kelly not getting a look in? I take it so Brian Kelly is the substitute goalkeeper. <laughs> he is, uh, Tim, but I think... You, uh, are you talking to Peter? We, we, better, you know? we better text Peter and see what he... I think there's only one man I can answer that question. That's Peter. And but I do think that he's, he's letting Shane get a bit of experience and look, I think, look... But if for getting somebody, uh, giving somebody so much experience, I take it he's looking uh, Shane Ryan for the oh, yeah. championship. I, I think it's looking. He wouldn't it's have a keeper right through the league. He's, he's looking, looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi Tim. Uh, it's great uh, to be gone from the lean years and uh, the keen years. Now the fans are getting value for money once again. Actually, that's a comment that came through yesterday as we came out of Fitzgerald Stadium, Dini. That there's uh, a real connection with um, Peter Keen, the management team, and. The players that even they were mixing yesterday again, they did it above in Galway, signing autographs out in the field. That the, there's a real connection, and to be successful in Kerry, you need those people out there behind you, on uh, yeah, shoulder well, to shoulder. Yeah, well, you say t- winning is everything, really. And uh, you know, Peter and his management, they've got off to an incredible start. Uh, they're trying out fellas. They're being consistent with fellas. Like they're leaving young Ryan in goals. He's got. You know, the four games or five games, whatever, is gone. So, that, you know, they're being very consistent. They're, everything is, is rosy in the garden for them. It won't stay that way. You can be sure they'll, you know, they'll be, they'll have their bad days as well. But at the moment, Kerry supporters are, are delighted where the team are playing. I suppose the big thing really is that apart from Tommy Welch, who is the elder statesman, if you like, all the other fellas are quite young. And, you know, the Kerry supporters were crying out for youth. For, for youth and for these minors over the last four or five years. Now we're seeing them coming through. They're playing uh, without fear? They're playing without fear and they, they've been winners at minor. I know the step up is, is great, but, you know, the winning is everything. And when you're winning, everybody is with you. Yeah, that's for sure. And if you lose, they go against you at times. Yeah. Uh, Fanon, can we talk about the middle uh, of the field? We talk yeah. about the breaking ball. Uh, the performance of Jack Barry and Mark Griffin yesterday, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I thought Dugan played a good game. And it's strange that when Mark went off, and Shane Enright is not a midfielder, I thought that Dugan's threat was nullified then at that stage. Uh, Jack certainly is a kind of a fella that you would persevere with anyway. But I'm not sure whether Mark is, is a player for that position. Mark has many qualities. He's fierce power of driving forward. But he got a very bad knock early in the game. And he That's was right. down for a while. And that may have impacted him. Um, but I thought that Dugan certainly contributed quite a lot to Monaghan's positive play yesterday. And that was a bit of a problem going forward. What Peter Payne's two uh, preferable choice is going to be interesting with David Moran coming back. So who is he going to go for? I would certainly think that Jack Barrett is, is probably going to partner somebody, maybe Dave. But I, could, I can't see uh, a place for, for Mark in right in midfield, maybe some other position, but not there. Yeah, Mark Griffin. Um, before we go to a break, Liam, we said about that middle diamond... Who's queuing up for places in the middle of the field? We, he tried out Adrian Spillane. I take it Adrian will be back again. No, Mark Griffin. We can't. Re- you have to learn your trade there as well. The, these are early games you know, for Mark it, Griffin. Yeah, it's it's a position, and, and Denny, no better man beside me, will tell you it's a hard position. No, no more like Shane Ryan in in, in goals. The midfield is a, is a hard position. But I, the one thing like we we sat around this table for for years, Tim, and we were on about maybe giving Mark a go in the middle of the field because he's strong, he's athletic, he's bullish. You know he's and he can play ball as well. Um, I do think he's he is going to be an option there. I think against the likes of the Dubs and these, he'll do a job because he he is he is strong. Jack Barry will is looking like our number one at the moment for midfield. Whoever's going to be partnering him, Adrian Splane. I do. I, I think there there is you, there is a good twenty or thirty minutes in, in Adrian as well. He does a job, you know. And I think that's what Peter's looking at. He's looking at fellas not to dominate a game, but to do a job. It's you not, have a it's role. How you feel, it's that, how you feel. Like yeah. Mark Griffin yesterday when before he before he got the, uh, he got a bad belt. Uh, you know, Mark was kind of helping defensively. He was getting back because he has defensively minded as well. So he w- he was stepping back into into Paul Murphy's position, and he was letting Paul to go to double team. Then you know, so these little small things that that, that like some Mark would add to a team instead of driving. Well, back forward a, a year ago, Dave Moore was our number one midfielder. You didn't even mention him in the last three players you mentioned. No, it's and look, David. Is David going to be finishing out games? Yeah, I think David will be finishing out games. Yeah, yeah. I think that David would be a great guy to bring on for the last twenty minutes. A bit of experience 
experience around middle of the field and um, I think I think that's what, what it's looking like Tim yeah, definitely so. Uh, definitely food for thought around the middle of the field. Uh, read one more comment before we take a break. Hi, Tim. Uh, good to see Kerry are finishing strongly and winning tight games. Uh, what do the panel think of Tommy Welch? He's getting better each game he plays. Charles, and we'll speak about that man after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Yes, you're listening here to Tara's Talk tonight and I have in studio uh, Dinny Long, Liam Brosman and Finn on Ryan as we look back at yesterday's victory for Kerry uh, making uh, 5 out of 5. Great stuff by Kerry as they continue great progress and like you say, we, they have one foot, uh, one leg even uh, inside in that league final. Uh, before the break, somebody uh, mentioned about Tommy Welch. Great game yesterday and it's soon. He's shown a lot... Huge leadership. He did it up in Galway, uh, Dinny, and he did it again yesterday. But somebody has texted in earlier and said, the mark is not there for the championship, and will Tommy be as effective? What's your answer to that? Yeah, well, there's no doubt that uh, if you can get the ball in quickly, uh, and it's a, a direct clash between Tommy and whoever is next to him, whether it be the full-back or the centre-back or whoever is there, like we have seen against Galway, and we saw it uh, blatantly again yesterday, that it'll take a... I don't think there's any player will catch it or take it away from him. So, on that score, he's nearly more or less unbeatable if it's one and one. Now, if the mark goes, that changes the thing slightly for Tommy. Because if the mark goes, when he'll get the ball, the better teams are then are going to say, OK, let's get in around him. And we know that if you're surrounded and don't get it away quickly, the referee will blow and point the finger out against you. So, he has been... It's tremendous. It's been a fairy tale for him. He, he's done extremely well. He's a good kicker. He kicked a marvellous point yesterday off his left foot. Looks he, very he, fit, did not he? Yeah, he looks. He, you know, he's a super, a super athlete. He's a, he's a fine fella. He he. His only problem is that will he have the pace when the game changes from the mark? Now, obviously, he is. A, a, a good man to have for a couple of positions. You could play him in the middle of the field, you could play him in full forward or maybe in the half forward line and again, he could be a player to finish out a game rather than a player to start the game but definitely if the mark is not there for the championship, I don't think he'll be as effective. Uh, Fanon, yesterday in the post-match interview with Peter, he said, I mentioned I brought up the, the name Tommy Walsh during the interview and he says, well he doesn't have guys in unless they can do a job. He's effectively saying that every guy in the panel has a job to do, rather than, before we say express good open football, every fellow is put out, but it's a case of everything is focus on every individual player, and if you can't do a job, you won't be in with Peter Keane. No, um, I agree with Dinny to a certain extent in relation to Tommy Walsh. Um, two of the marks that he had, there was a lot of space between him and his marker, And then he stopped. And I felt, under normal circumstance, he had the capacity, or will he have the capacity, when it comes to the hard ground in the summer, to be more mobile and kick the ball quickly over the bar. But there was certainly enough space there. At that time, he caught two of the marks to do that. But I, 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 when it comes to the championships, it's going to be very interesting. Um... He he cut those balls because he played in Australian football, so it was an intu- a, a t- an instinctive That's thing to do. do, and it was effective on the day. But as I suppose, when it comes to the championship, your questions remain. Yeah, definitely. So uh, now we change disciplines for a couple of minutes. Uh, of course, a second half blitz in the snow. If you pardon the pun, by a producer, I uh, carry hurlers crush meat at Fitzgerald Stadium yesterday and book their place in next week ins uh, Alliance Division 2A final against Westmeath and here to chat about the game a man that has been on Terrace Talk before well versed uh, of course on Kerry Hurling it's the great Ian Brick good evening Ian evening Tim how are you how are you sir yesterday um, of course uh, I must congratulate you uh, you're in charge of uh, the Camogie side in Kerry uh, hopefully that's going well for you well it's, it's I suppose the results haven't gone away yet uh, Tim but um I can't fault the girls any for their efforts so far and uh been totally enjoyable so far. So 
we'll see what happens for the, for the rest of the, the summer in here yeah. so far so good in here yeah she'll bring huge experience to it and hopefully you'll do well to come we'll call it championship uh, Ian let's talk about the kingdom they've reached their uh, division 2A final that will take place in Innes next Sunday against Westmeath uh, yesterday conditions pretty poor uh, at one stage uh, we thought we were going to have drift and snow but it didn't um, I suppose pretty level in the early part of the game right up to the, the end of the first half but it really took control after half time yeah, you'd have to give great credit to, to the boys in fairness. Um, you see, like, like I said, they were down at even at time, and I suppose it was a bit of a surprise because they dominated the play, to be honest. Uh, but they had a lot of wides, and the uh, goalkeeper made a couple of saves. Uh, but the conditions were, were atrocious, uh, to be fair. And um, yeah, whatever they regathered at half time, when they were, whatever Finton said, um, they completely dominated, like I said. And um, I suppose one thing to score. Another three years, but they kept me scoreless as well. And it wasn't that there was a driving wind or anything down the pitch. It was just that they completely dominated and uh, made the most of their position. So they played really, really well, yeah. Uh, Ian, how difficult would, as a hurler, you being there, how difficult would that uh, first half to be to play on? Well, I, I never liked to play in the cold anyway, Tim, but um, I suppose at one stage, even the, the Meath goalkeeper, he uh, was maybe 15, 20 minutes, the, the hurley flew over his hand. He's trying to make it clear, and, and so that will give you an idea how, how cold it was. Um, yeah, there's no comparison, I suppose, if, like with, with football, even and we're able to wear gloves. But all in the hurling cold conditions is, is terrible, and even like some of the lads were, didn't even have skins in their arms. And um, it, like it is a real test of a man, I suppose, and um, how he, he can apply himself in those conditions. But uh, they did, even the handling was good. Um, like so Jason Dean there, Michael Leary, they, they caught some high ball, um, Mikey Boyle. And um, I suppose it, it would have been a lot higher the score for Kerry only for those cold conditions because uh, some shots, shots had dropped short and things right. like that. And you couldn't blame them for that now, to be fair. How important was the bench? We see yesterday they came on and they, they rattled the net. Uh, very important that you know who's coming off the bench and they can deliver. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that's what uh, has strengthened this squad this year more than m- many other years, I suppose, to be fair, is that they have strength in depth now and they have uh, competition for places. Um, and that's what drives fellas on in uh, training every night as well. Um, and if you know that you have a good bench, that will you have to be on your toes when you're playing. And I suppose when Podge and, and, and the two Jordans came on there, that uh, they made real impact and um, opened up the plays, I suppose, and they converted much more of the scores in. So... It's great for the boys to know that that, um, that they, there is the, that competition for places, and um, it sets them up nicely for um, for next weekend. Also, it does. And uh, Kerry will go in as fair as I take it to that the way they've played so far in the league. Possibly not. Well, probably not because of the fact that they have been beaten by Westmead already. Um, you, you'd have to give Westmead uh, the, the, the favourites in my suppose because. They have been better than us over the last couple of years. But, look, Kerry are in a great position now, like I say. Um, having lost to the team, uh, they'll certainly want to uh, put one over on them. Uh, but they, they're in a really good position, I suppose, now. And, uh, like I say, with that competition for places, um, yeah, they, they're just really going to drive on and hopefully they will be, be able to turn them over from uh, the earlier round. Is it fair to say then that, not because they've reached the, the league final, that those two teams probably deserve to be in the higher tier? Um, I'm not sure. Um, somebody else above in Dublin is making these de- decisions, I suppose, who should be promoted and relegated. All you can do is, is go out and try and win whatever competition and, and uh, or final you're in. Um, if it's good enough, then, well, fair enough, I suppose, you, you should be promoted. Um, it would, of course, be nice for, for the two teams um, to be promoted, but then I suppose you'd have um, teams in Division 1B saying, you know, only one team should go down. So, yeah. look, it's, it's hard to know, I suppose, with the restructuring next year. Um, we'll see how that affects uh, the setup. But, look, all Kerry going to worry about now is just beating Westmeath and finally, uh, next weekend as well. Are you calling it, Ian? Can Kerry do this in, in Ennis the weekend? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the additional com- competitive games that Kerry has had. Um, I, I think we'll definitely stand to them and uh, that just extra age the fact that they've been beaten already by Westmead will, will drive them on I think and I think they are good enough to, to turn them over yeah. Great stuff Ian thanks a million for coming on Terrace Talk this evening and well, let's hope, uh, hope hopefully Kerry will do it the weekend beat Westmead and Horse Radio Kerry uh, will have live commentary on that game at the weekend uh, just get to a few comments before we take our break for the news at 7 of course after 7.15 we should have the great uh, Darrow Shea in studio there's comments coming through to us uh, well done to both Kerry hurlers and footballers yesterday also well done to Pubble Skull on their fantastic win I was listening to the matches and Tim your commentary was great come from Mick Allen originally from Dingle 
but now living in the county uh, of Meath. Hi Tim, uh, the league doesn't provide, provide tests for man markers, that only comes in the championship in Crow Park when marquee forwards uh, will beat you on his own. Uh, the Dingle Cliff and Mountain Rescue uh, Road Bowling Tournament will take place on Saturday next at Ballydavid and Gallers Road uh, starting at 10.30 on Saturday morning. A total of five scores, all of, for a very good cause, organised by the Shannon Vale Club in Clonakilty uh, by Harry Jen- Jennings. And that comes from Murish Fenton. Congratulations to Kerry Horlers and footballers yesterday. Also well done to Pobble Skull and their manager Eamon Fismorris. And that comes from Noreen O'Flaherty in Tralee. Uh, of course, Finn on Ryan, Dinny Long, and Liam Brosnan are going to stay with us because we're going to talk more at Gaelic football after the news at seven. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry, brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie, leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back to our second hour of Terrace Talk this evening. Later on, we will have uh, Dar O'Shea, the former great uh, with Kerry in the middle of the field with six uh, Celtic crosses, is he? Um, I've Liam Brosnan, Dinny Long and Finn on Ryan in studio as we look back at yesterday's win for the Kingdom. And uh, those comments coming through to us, uh, there would have been a better atmosphere if the game was held in Tralee on the lights as there was only 6,000 in Killarney. Congrats to both the hurlers and the footballers. That comes from Jerry in Tralee. Um, Tim, I really I really love listening to your commentary for all the Kerry matches, but I find that, Tim, you slightly wander away when doing commentary. <laughs> Liam Broston, what do you think of that? <laughs> you wander away here, Tim. That's well, the main well, commentary. Well, <laughs> I take it's the... And that comes from a New York listener. Well, I tell you, there's a fine line between a, a kick in the butt and a tap in the back <laughs> after that one. Uh, but keep those comments true to us. And I'm a brave man for doing the, being, I suppose, negative about myself. But uh, I think there was more good than bad tonight coming in about our commentaries anyway. Uh, I think Monaghan has shown great skill and it takes great skill to beat Kerry at any level. I think uh, Sean O'Shea was great and Conor McManus was poor. And that comes from Michael in Strand Road. Well done to Kerry yesterday. A great win. And that comes from Alice in Valencia. Kerry in Dublin are are two of the best teams in the country at the moment. Kerry are finishing very strong, like Dublin have done all along, and I'm hoping that Kerry meet Dublin again. Uh, also, Peter Keane is doing a fantastic job, and that comes from uh, Mike Allen in Fires. Uh, Dinny Long, Kerry finishing strongly, and that's something probably the last couple of years that we could be playing well right up until the what, 62nd, 60 60 60 60 63rd minute, and then I won't say collapse, but we haven't that same finish. But is that down to fresh legs and a bench? Well, I suppose it's a combination of both, Tim, and uh, I suppose, it, you know, Kerry look fitter than, than than other teams, and I suppose, you know, I don't know how you analyse it, but, you know, in the last 10 minutes, you look at all their games, you know, in, in Galway and Shoom, they finished very strongly. Uh, they finished very strongly yesterday. That seems to be a trademark by this present bunch of fellas. And uh, I think the most important thing is that they're getting those scores in the last 10 minutes. Like yesterday when the scores were needed, they were able to get those extra points. The very same as they did above against Galway. OK, Galway were down a man and all that. And Monaghan lost a man yesterday, but I don't think it had that big a bearing on the on the final result. But yeah, Kerry are, are finishing very strong. I think Kerry are extremely fit. Uh, they look they look very fit. So I presume fitness has a small bit to do with it as well. And Liam, uh, I suppose what it was inspired substitution we saw Tomas O'Shea when he came. Uh, on above in Galway. Likewise, he brought a bit of... He won a free, of course, yeah. within, within seconds of coming on again. Uh, he'd be kind of one of these players that could end up, I suppose, the same way as Barry John did for Infus Morris, an impact player. Is that fair to say? You could, yeah. It's, lo- it's looking like it at the moment. And there's a great buzz about him when he comes on and he, he adds that, that little bit of extra kind of boost to the whole team because they can kick a ball to him and he can he can do his job. He can he can take a man on and he seems, as he did against Galway, he kicked a great score. So, yeah, I do like your your thing there was Kerry finishing strong I think it's down to the, the word legs again we have youth uh, we have plenty of guys that are coming on that we've used coming on again and I think it bodes well but no we, we still have questions to be asked I think Mayo will ask us a few questions now Saturday, Saturday week above in Tralee they're a big physical team uh, Aidan O'Shea and these guys coming to town no, so it'll be interesting to see what way we match up with them and what way will they play Do they, they, they seem to kick a nice long ball at times as well so it'll be interesting to see how we, how we cope with that and I think the big one then will be and I think we're all looking forward to it will be the league final in Dublin I think that's going to be to, that will really 
see where where we are uh, against the Dubs. Do again. you reckon it's going to be Dublin? Oh, it's going to be Dublin. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely going to be Dublin, Tim. Fanon, do you think it's going to be Dublin? That anything can happen in two games? Yeah, I'm I be th- confident. Yeah, I think it, I think it's Dublin. Uh, Dublin last two games. Do Kerry want Dublin? Um, I'm not sure about that one uh, because the result of that match will have a huge bearing on the rest of the summer. Now, can you imagine a situation with Kerry and Dublin and all on the final? I think that the hype will be probably uh, massive from the Dublin media. And if, du- if it's a Dublin Kerry final, what you will have, they'll go for the five in a row. If the hype was as ba- was bad when we were going to five in a row, it'll be nothing compared to what is for them. And that would be an advantage for Kerry going in because it would create a lot of certainty and anxiety and something that our fellas, if we do get to the final, could capitalise on. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, Dinny, can I talk about, there's players to come in. We talk about, and I mentioned yesterday, I, I spoke to um, Peter after the game and he was saying that he would hope to give game time to uh, the likes of David Clifford, James O'Donoghue and of course the Crokes boys as well. Uh, they're on their journey and wish them the very best of games. It's also covered here live on Radio Kerry on St. Patrick's Day. A busy weekend actually, Dublin and, or sorry, Kerry and Mayo the night before and then the St. Patrick's Day, the, the club final. Crokes boys coming back. Um, if they're, going to go, they're going to be playing football anyway. They're going to lack fitness and they're so such intelligent players coming back into it. Which clo- uh, Crokes players will be coming back to us? Well, <laughs> I think, you know, we, we were talking earlier on about, you know, it's a great period for the, the, the new management. But I think that his big problem will be to pick his best 25 or 30 or whatever they pick. And then his next problem would be... At 15, he starts. There's very little between a lot of the Kerry players that we've seen and pl- Kerry players that have come in. Obviously, David Clifford, Paul Ganey, James O'Donoghue, Gavin White, Young Brosnan, uh, all these fellas are, you know... Are young equal, David Shaw. Young David Shaw. All these fellas, you know, the, 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 how do you pick between them? I suppose if you look and we say over the last 12 months, the one player that put up his hand who will definitely get a Kerry jersey would be Young Clifford, right? Apart from that, you know, the fellas that have to come back, how many of them will get on? Uh, it's not so much how many of them will get on, but how will they be all accommodated and how will he pick? That's the big the big thing going forward for Kelly because there isn't that much between 27 or 28 players. So it's a plus in lots of ways, but it's a headache, headache in other ways. But certainly it's better to have the headache than be saying we have only three forwards or four forwards. Can we have plenty players? But it's the, the big the big trick will be for the management to get the balance in the team right. Cr- crucial positions will be full back, centre back, your two midfielders. It looks like Sean O'Shea is a, is 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 chalked down for the forty. So after that, David Clifford inside in the corner. Nearly all the other places are probably up for grabs. Yeah, interesting what Denny says there that, you know, the players coming back there, there's attackers coming back. Of course, outside of Gavin White, of course, that way, and he's so good that he'll probably play himself onto that team anyway. So it's going to be competitive. Um, but the forward, you, you, Liam, you've been here all night and you didn't mention Shawnee Shea, what he did from the sideline. I'm very surprised. <laughs> absolute <laughs> genius. Absolute genius. And sure, look, it's all over social media and every every page you look at is Shawnee Shea and well deserved. But look, t- 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 one thing to do is against Tyrone and very difficult to follow it up but to do is probably for the route yesterday off the outside of the boot that yeah, was but Tim it's not, it's not only that it's his performances in all the games and even the Sigerson in the last couple of weeks the, the boy is is, ex- is he the best no. footballer in the country at the minute well, without well, there's, there's, no, there's no questioning it at the moment he is the best the best footballer pound for pound in the country at the moment at the way, at the way he's playing and I hope and I hope it continues uh, what about those, as Jenny said, about those guys coming back? Uh, it's going to make it competitive, uh, yeah. difficult decisions down the road. How, how's Peter King going to keep all these guys happy? Look, Tim, it's basically the guys that have the jersey, and there's, there's a saying that a lot of managers and coaches use that if you have the jersey, it's up to you to hold on to it. And so it's up to the Tom Sullivans, the Gavin Crowleys, the Paul Murphys to hold on to their jerseys. And if they don't do the job, you have the likes of the Gavin Whites and all these fellas uh, at, your, at your heels. And, that, and that's good for, for, it's good for Peter. And it's good for competition in, in teams as well because it keeps fellas in their toes. The same up front when you have the likes of Michal Burns and all these guys snapping at Dara Minahan's heels. You know, so Dara wants to keep his jersey. So every time Dara will go out into a training session, every time Dara will put on a green and gold jersey, he'll give it 110%. And so it's 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 going to be it's it's up to the boys that have the jerseys to look after them. Look, 
I, we, we are, we're always looking for Kerry players. Now we have them. So it's a, it's a great complaint to have that we have such a, a, a backup of players to come in to fill in positions. If you're outside the loop at the minute... If you're not part of that structure, I'm sure Donny Buckley's working very hard on a defensive strategy and what have you. If you're outside that loop, is it difficult? Players, the county league is starting this weekend. Yeah. Is it difficult for players to get back in outside of these guys that we've just spoken about? I don't think so. Looking at Peter and even dealing with Peter with the Sigis and Cup and down thing, he's very open to giving fellas a go and bringing guys in. Like, we're not privy to what's going on. I'm sure there's another probably 10 or 15 fellas inside that we don't know of that's in there. I, like the, the Mike Potts from Crokes, I know that there's in there. I'm sure the likes of the David Shaw's they mightn't feature this year on, on the first 15 for Kerry at some stage but definitely in the next year or two you'll see you'll see the likes of these guys so Peter would have maybe 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 seven or eight of that calibre player in there you know, so there's it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a golden era for Kerry at the moment would you agree with that? It's a golden area. Those minors of winning five All Ireland minors, you you have to have material coming off that. And there's a freshness and there's a hunger out there. And we seem to be getting it right. Yeah, we can say it's a golden era unless we win the All Ireland with them. You know, um, I I agree with Liam that there's a lot of talented players yet to come into the squad. What's the team going to be for the league final? Is he going to go and and stay faithful to the fellas who have got him up to this stage with the people that are coming in? You know, that's going to be a very interesting one. So, um, you know, I, think, I, I think we can look very positively, anyway, for the future because it's like the Dublin team. The Dublin team is getting a little bit older and we're young, so it's positive all the way. And it's fair to say, you mentioned there about changes. He has made a certain amount of changes during a game, but it's, it's becoming very a settled team. To be fair, he's sticking with the same full back line as such. Uh, likewise, the half back line, uh, maybe especially with Paul Murphy and Tom Sullivan, uh, it's pretty settled enough, isn't it? At the minute, um, no. I'd say if you analyse it a lot more deeper than that, Tim, there are still question marks there in a number of positions and defensively. And where's he going to actually, you know, put fellas in midfield? Dinny was right, you know, midfield central positions up front, and David Clifford is a shoe in, and Young Shea. And, and I mean, what kind of form is Paul Ganey going to come back? A great footballer. There's a pile of questions that remain unanswered. Uh, great to be looking forward to the, the rest of the year. Uh, Dinny, would you agree with that? That uh, I know what um, Fanon is, is questioning. Maybe there's question marks about different players or maybe a strategy or whatever. But Peter's probably going with a lot of the same players. Only uh, was it was two changes from the Galway game uh, for the game against Monaghan. He's going for a, a set look. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 you know, he seems to have, uh, or the management seems to have, uh, you know, a certain number of players, if you like, kind of glued into positions. Uh, will that continue? Maybe that's what he will do. But I, th- I think that maybe another thing that maybe a lot of people would overlook, and um, you know, is that how serious are other teams taking the league, particularly with the Super 8s now? Are teams putting as much effort into the league as they were before the Super 8s? That I can't answer. Are the Tyrones and these teams, the Mayos, uh, are they putting the same effort in that they would in a normal year for National League? We won't We'll have to wait for that until the final to see where Kerry are at. If it's a Kerry Dublin final, obviously it's going to be a great test, not for for Kerry but for Dublin as well. So I'm sure you asked the question earlier on: Would Kerry want Dublin in the league final? I think the answer is very yes. I think Kerry will be mad to play Dublin again. I think the more times you play them, the more you can learn, and the more times you play them, obviously there you're going to be gaining confidence and you're going to find out a lot more about your team and no substitute for that that experience uh, those comments coming through to us uh, Kino has changed the atmosphere altogether in our place he's reaching out to everyone players and supporters fantastic performance by both the hurlers and the footballers just uh, looking forward to Innocent Sunday should be a fantastic occasion for Kerry hurling and let's hope uh, we'll have good Kerry support in Cusick Park uh, Shane Inright contributed to the game uh, when needed Hi Tim uh, Paul Ganey will be the man for the championship in the full forward position as he has a great pair of hands uh, has pace and is a fantastic reader of the game a great win yesterday and a great terrace talk show tonight as usual Tim um, Liam Brosnan Paul Ganey yeah. um, 
he's a guy that when at the top of the ground comes you want him there's going to be serious competition in that full forward line there will yeah a serious competition and not only that when you have the likes of Tommy Welch we talked about Tommy Welch there earlier about the mark but I think when you have the likes of Tommy Welch inside in the full forward line and you have the likes of Paul Ganey the David Cliffords and the Dara Minans running off him as well there's there's massive options there like Paul we all saw Paul in the county championship with Dinkle this year like Paul's look he's an all star that's and I do I do think Paul will will be a starter for for Kerry. Um, you have the likes of Stephen O'Brien. Another guy that we had didn't mention much t- tonight of was is Gavin O'Brien, who has really stepped up. To know has has made a fantastic uh, start to his to his campaign in, in the green and gold. Uh, a future, I think, midfielder maybe even for Kerry. I I can see him probably to know taking maybe that line uh, above in Crow Park. To know so like we said, you have Paul Ganey, you have you have David Clifford to come in there. You have Tommy Welsh, you have Stephen O'Brien. No, that's that's that there are four or five bodies there now. And that's without mentioning another five or six fellas that you could mention. You know, so I think Peter is is he's smiling inside. He mightn't be smiling out and telling everyone, but I, I'd say deep down out him, I'd say he's he's happy at the moment. And you're happy enough for yourself. Yeah. Um, Dinny Long, uh, a man is going to be in with us here in a while, um, the great Dar O'Shea. What are your, any great or highlight memories of watching Dara play? Oh, I suppose the only thing you can say about Dara, you know, that he was a marvellous midfielder. He was in the mould of the greats in Kerry. He's one of the greats. Uh, played it, you know, for 14 or 15 years or whatever he played it for. He was uh, a model midfielder, I suppose, in today's terms. We don't see that as much, I suppose, Fenton for Dublin as the standout midfielder in the last four or five years. That's the calibre that Dara played for at 10 or 12 or 14 years, whatever length of time he played for Kerry. He followed in the great steps of, you know, the Jack O'Shea's, the Mick O'Connell's, all these fellas. So he's up there with the very, very best. And as I say, Kerry don't have one of those fellas at this present time. They'll be hopeful that the Darrow O'Brien or that, you know, young Barry or somebody will fit that mould down the road. But, you know, Darrow O'Shea was a marvellous midfielder. You can't say anything else. Yeah, thanks for your input tonight. As you can stay here, we can listen to Dara, of course, Finn and Ryan. Brilliant to have you again on Terra Stock. Likewise, Dean Long and Ian Broston. And maybe I might pull you for another question before this programme is over. We now take a break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry, brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie, leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. And many thanks there, of course, to the three lads. A great uh, input and insight into yesterday's game at Fitzgerald Stadium. Uh, thank you to Dinny Long, Finon Ryan, and likewise Liam Brosnan. Uh, now, I'm delighted to have on Terrace Talk one of the all time greats as far as Kerry is concerned. He's a modest old guy as well. It's the great Dara O'Shea. Dara, you're very welcome to Terrace Talk. Thanks, Timmy. Thanks for having me. Um, Dara, it's something like 10 years since you retired. Um, has, first of all, has the game changed? Uh, has the game has changed completely since I retired. I retired um, in zero nine, and it was it was different. The kickouts, I suppose, as a midfielder, <clears throat> kickouts have changed a lot. I mean, the goalie has become the focal point of most teams, I suppose, at the, in in the modern game. But fitness, obviously, is going up every year. Um, tactically, the blanket defences has obviously come and. I think Dublin have probably taken a bit of that out of it, you know, in, in recent years. But it, it goes through. I say in the last ten years, there's been a load of changes, lots of lots of them good, and lots of them bad. But it's 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 like anything. I mean, over the course of my career when I was playing, there was a load of things that happened that weren't good or were bad. You know, I mean, there was there was all kinds of things, and generally, it's still the best generally by and large the best teams always still win you know what I mean so like I mean the dogs are on top I must have the football I think so it comes down to it I mean the best players if you have the best players they'll always win you won your first All Ireland season in '97, and then what? A, you gave us great days out during all those naughty days some bad days as well but I suppose the first team uh, Dara that you played the change thing is to, there was no longer open football was playing the likes of in 3 and 5 playing Tyrone um, they brought a different brand of football, didn't they? Tyrone did. Uh, they, they've they changed it around. It's Mickey Hart had his own kind of his own thoughts on it, which, I, which they can't. There's pros and cons. I mean, you look at Rory Gallagher and the way he's playing today with Fermanagh. There's a lot to be. I mean, they're they're after getting promoted of or in our own promotion, and they're and people in Fermanagh. They have a small footballing community up there, and they're delighted with it. You look at Leitrim got promoted as well over the weekend, and. Tip, uh, Jim McGuinness probably started this more recently than more than anybody else. Uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to watch. Let's call a spade a spade. And I remember, <coughs> I remember being up the north with um, 
with Mickey Hart one night in a Q and A, and. I was, in the, I was in a rush to get home because I was driving back down to Kerry that night and Peter Canavan was doing the, he was doing the interview and Mickey said, Mickey's point was that, you know, I, I was making the point about kickouts that I used to love watching High Feeling and that's what it kind of inspired me to go play with Kerry and whatnot, looking at the likes of Jack O'Shea and Shawnee Welch and obviously Mick O'Connell was before my time, but to see these wonderful players going up feeling the ball and I was making the point that it's a disaster to see it out of the game with these short kickouts and all that and... Mickey Hart was saying he was making the point that I mean there was an equal kind of a skill in two or three fellas turning over possession with one guy there that's his <laughs> philosophy that was his philosophy and like I suppose if I was any better I, I would have taken him on and maybe argued with him but I was looking at the long road down and I said I, I said you're probably right Mickey and left it at that <laughs> I wasn't going to get involved but that's the way that he was thinking and he genuinely believed it he wasn't joking and that's, that's certain fellas the way they believe in, <clears throat> in the game so we were lucky in Kerry always that any of the coaches that are any of the managers that I ever played under, they never asked you to play any kind of thing. What like would it. the late great Paul do you think of this? I know it's kind of changed during his time in in charge, but it's gone to another level now. He would he think it's an alien game? Yeah, look, you 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 adapt. I mean, from where when Paulie took us over, he he had to adapt as well and change things around. And there was, I mean, when we were playing against the likes of Meath at that time, there was Meath and a couple of more teams. Dublin were doing it as well. They were dropping the two wing forwards back a bit deep, and we had to adapt a bit as well. I remember when we won our Ireland in '97, Dennis Dwyer and Pal Aid were our two wing forwards, and the work rate. They both both of them did as well. So like you like it's not a case of if you can't beat them, join them, but you do have to adapt and you do have to change your philosophy a bit. And I remember Dennis Dwyer the same year, I think he got concussed three times in the one year with the work rate he was doing and the tackling and so on. Same with Palid. So, so there was a certain <coughs> element of that type of game. There are certain elements and you have to kind of roll at the punches. I mean, it's not a case of sticking your head in the sand and saying, Oh look, this will go away. It won't go away and if you want to be successful you have to, to move with it. You have to move with it, yeah. What do you think of all this uh in your day, Dara, uh, be it uh, Dermot Murphy or whoever, whatever Kerry keeper was there, kicking out into the middle and Dara or whoever was with him would go up and fetch it. The, the keeper's going short. Now, we've seen it yesterday in, in Fitzgerald Stadium. The amount of times that Rory Began went short because they're pushing up in the kickouts, making it awkward, didn't want to kick it into the middle of the field. Must yeah, be, but it, it's, must it's, be, it would be very frustrating for the likes of yourself if you were playing today. It would, but I thought Kerry did very well yesterday. But it was funny, um, I remember dealing with Murphy and the, the, I, we was, I was playing with Seamus Gannon out in the middle of the field and um, we were having a discussion about kickouts. And at that time, we were playing the likes of Armagh and we were playing Cork and we were playing their various teams. And um, <coughs> Jack O'Connor was in charge, I think, at the time. And we were having a discussion out in the middle of the field about about what way we'd the, the, the kick out, what way we do them and what not. And Diamond Murphy was in goal and Diamond had a habit of if it went down on the right-hand side, it was going out the right-hand side or left-hand side. There was no real technical, how would you say, con- convoluted way of k- kicking it out. And um, the only consolation I could take out of it was we did ourselves out in the middle of the field, Tommy, or in that case, Seamus Scanlon and myself, we didn't know where the ball was going ourselves. So the only consolation we were going was if they were doing the video analysis up in Tyrone or wherever they were doing it, they had no clue whatever. At least we had the, we had the comfort of knowing that they were spending hours upon hours trying to decipher this. We didn't know it ourselves, so there was comfort in that. So yeah, you definitely won a lot of those battles, Dara. Um, I, I know we're going to go off on different tangents, Dara. I suppose a huge loss for you, uh, Dara, as in winning All Ireland title, not winning the club. You had a powerful uh, club team or a senior club team when you won county championships back in the early noughties, 2002, 2003. Losing that club final, did that hurt? Oh, it did. Yeah, that was that was one of the worst defeats I had as a player, and particularly so because the age profile of the team we we were we were kind of past our we probably had a better team in zero one. one when I say better team they were much the same players but we were we were maybe two years obviously two years younger the age profile of the team uh, <coughs> excuse me and as a result getting back there was a two year cycle to get back because we'd win the county championship obviously and we'd go back and, and try and do that and we were in decline at that stage so it was a long way to crawl back for us and uh, we didn't on the, on the day like we didn't do ourselves justice we, did, we, we didn't play as well as we thought we could have now Caltro were valued for money the same day but that was disappointing because it was it was a, a great journey over the couple of years for a small club like us to win to reach senior status, status. Well, to reach senior status, first of all, and it was more difficult. It was, diff- it was more difficult at the time because you had to win various competitions to get up to senior status. But 
um, we we got there and as I say then we, we had injuries and whatnot and we got it together but I think it was Seamus McGarrett in fairness to him was the was the the springboard to that and he got us all together for the club because you know we were well, I suppose at the time we had Derek Kinnead and myself um, Tomas Mark and Aidan McGarrett and Rob McGarrett was in there so up the spine of our team were invariably involved with Kerry so we didn't have a you know so to stay in Division 1 and to be competitive we didn't have a full complement of players you know at the time <coughs> that was a difficult that was well it was you see I mean if you take your full back your centre back your centre fielder your centre forward and your full forward out of the team you're taking a spine out of it and then as a result we weren't playing as much as we should have been together and then you know you come in for county championship games and now we got two county championships which we were delighted with and it was a huge honour for a small club like ourselves but the, club, cl- the, cl- the All-Ireland Club would be the icing on the cake it would have been great it would, you know I mean that would be there forever glory now we, we got to Crow Park and we got there at Paddy's Day hugely disappointing hugely disappointing uh, Dara's going to stay with us. We're now going to take a break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. You're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. I'm delighted to have uh, the great Dara O'Shea in studio with us tonight. Um, Dara, I suppose always on a night like this you'll be asked a question. Who was your greatest opponent? You, you've come up against some tough guys over you over the years. Anything? I think, I think your very first game was against Derry or one of those Anthony Tohill. So tough midfielders uh, thought Dara his trade. Yeah, and there was no there was no no place to hide back in the day. They were tough. We remember we went up to a league match against um, <coughs> against Derry above and ban the screen at her I'm not sure where it was now it was up in it wasn't the main ground it wasn't um, Kelly Park it was it was one of the smaller grounds a club ground and was conditions were rough there and um, I was midfield I think with, I think was Connor Kearney I think of myself and um, Terry were all our champions at the time and we had we were Mark and Anthony Toll and Brian McGilligan and, two big uh, men in the middle of the field two big men and the um the ground was a bit the ground there was a good give in the ground as well so it was hard to get away from him <laughs> at 19 years of age <clears throat> you wouldn't get away and again at that time the weights weren't you know you wouldn't have been physically as developed as you would like you've been you know in later in, you know when when the weights came in in, in earnest and, and we knew what we were doing with them but um she has no you'd and it was it was difficult to break into it then at the time because uh, when you're dealing with I mean if you, at that time I was you'd you'd be conceding two or three stone weight or more and trying to concede you it know takes try, time to develop though. it does and it's I mean it's it's easier to compete with these fellas at the top of the ground you know when 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 the ground is good but when you can't get away from them and trying to get off the ground and crashing in and you know what it is then as well in tougher conditions then those guys that are developed more than you they've hard the bones are fully developed they're hard the bones you know that they're heavier and every hit takes takes its own I'm sure that you taught that trait to a few young fellas when they came up against you over the years as well I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone has to go through their apprenticeship you know? uh, Dara uh, I suppose we talk about a great, some great rivalry with Cork over the years as well and some great battles uh, not just Nicholas Murphy uh, but the sight of a red jersey for Dara O'Shea and a Kerry man it's very easy to raise your game yeah, sure. I mean, we were reared in Munster finals. Um, remember my earliest memories going to going to to Killarney, and I remember well. You go down. I mean, my father, Lord Merson, used to bring us to the games, and you go down towards you know where the tunnel where the Kerry team, the old dressing room was in in, in Fitzgerald Stadium, and you'd go down by the wire <coughs> to see the teams coming out, and next thing you'd you'd smell the winter green coming, and the next thing these cork fellas would come out and. They, they, oiled up and ready to go and you just, just say how are our fellas going to take these fellas on they were monsters and then all you, used to see, all you used to see was the green and gold coming out and you'd know all was well again everything was okay in the world and we were reared in those things so they were very special games for me I, I loved and I more particularly so when we were beating them but when I started out first we had a couple of losses to them and that hardened you and it, 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 it your resolve grew then <coughs> It made the the victories a lot better than afterwards. I mean, that's what really we had a couple of bad years, tough years. So when I was lucky enough to be there when when we went through tough times. So then later on, when we when we became successful and when we had a couple of good teams, you know, there was I was on a number of great teams, and that's the one thing I've I've I, I suppose I have the best regard for is that how lucky I was, how fortunate I was to have played with so many fantastic players. I mean, I was lucky enough to play with and against probably some of the best players that ever played the game. And from that point of view, I was just lucky to be part of it. Dara, was there pressure on you when you came into Kerry set up first day because? 
was Pawdy's involvement, the late great Pawdy, uh, being the first of the nephews, really. Uh, did you say, I'm Pawdy's, I have to perform? Was that sort of pressure? Did well, it lie with you? It, it didn't. Well, I remember coming in and, and we were, when Ogie was in charge, and um, it was a bit like the lads at the minute. It's a bit like the Kerry team at the minute. You know, every league game is is Peter Kane now. He's after taking over and he, fi- you know, every every league game is scrutinised and even back then there wasn't near as many papers, social media wasn't there but I mean we were we were any game, I mean Radio Kerry or the Kerry men or the Kerry's eye, the kingdom at the time they'd be, you'd be, you'd be as good as your last game and there was such a hunger for, for Kerry to do well that it was always and you would, you'd have a big win maybe against the likes of a Down or a Derry back in the day who were doing well and they were bad winter teams you know they weren't probably as good they weren't firing in all cylinders and then coming up against Cork in the Muscle Championship then there was an awful deflation but there was a huge appetite for success and it created its own pressure but I learned early on look, you, you what you have to do in this and any young player coming through you you generally mentally you have to you have to isolate yourself look I mean you 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 don't really take things on, you know. I mean, you. It's it's important. I remember Paddy Shea. I remember very well years ago. We were we were um, we were involved with Kerry at the time, and our local club behind were involved in the Comorth Spell and the guys like that. And they were we were kind of pulled for because it was coming up close to Championship, and we missed out on it. And there was a local kind of a. There was a local, um, there was a protest locally behind a kind of a small local protest that, as to why we weren't, why did we didn't go up and whatnot. And I said to Paddy, I said, Jiz, you're under a small bit of pressure here. I said like that to him and I said, what are you going to do? I want to do nothing about it, he said. And sure, they're entitled to their opinion and all this crack was going on anyway. So what I didn't realise was they were, they were, there was crowds coming to the bar to see his reaction and to see how this, this protest was going. So the bar was flying. We won the All Ireland the year later. Party was delighted. Party was delighted. We won the All Ireland the year later, and he was he was on about this Camortis, which was a very important competition, and we won it a few times afterwards. But it just it prioritizes things and makes sure that everything, and then afterwards, play the long game and be you know you you have to pick and choose and you have to be ruthless and mentally tough at all times. And that's what you have to because during that time that Party came in for a lot of criticism because of a you know a statement that was made and loosely or whatever we want to describe because we are demanding as a, our supporters here ah, but I think look there's a two way street look it's it's great I, I think it's great in one way once it's done right I mean that demand if you go anywhere in the county if you if I like in my job it carries me all over the county and you meet people and the first thing they'll do is talk about football you go to mass you go to the shop you go to oh, you go anywhere you go to the pub football invariably will come up it's a range it's a religion and that's why Kerry have been so successful because it counts and it's important and it's in the fabric of society. So that from that regard, Kerry will always be there thereabouts. And the only thing about it is, you know, it's it's there's demands on a lot like even Long Sean O'Shea you now who's going through a great patch at the minute. <clears throat> be concerned that he's not overworked, you know, I mean he's gone through, the amount of mileage he's put up since January, we'll say, with Sigurdsson and everything like that, I think we have to be a small bit clever with in the management of that, but look Peter Kane, they're all, they're monitoring all those things in the modern game and it's one of the things that is probably better managed than was before in my time. Uh, a lot of <coughs> comments came through today to us, uh, Dara, you know, speaking, we said highlights from them Aileen O'Sullivan on Twitter said, a 2004 draw against Limerick Dara catches the ball over the crossbar and stop a Limerick winning Monster. Also, every match he played against Cork was fantastic. So, uh, fierce admiration for you out there. And I think every year probably goes an inch higher that catch that day, that famous catch down on the Gator Grounds. <laughs> um, it was one of those games we were we were weren't playing well. And Limerick uh, people people underestimate how good Limerick was at the time. I think Liam Kearns was in charge of them, and they were very competitive and very. They were there thereabouts for a number of years, and they had a, they had the, the backbone of an excellent team. And I mean, probably you asked about my toughest opponents by far and away probably the most consistent player I ever played against was, was John Kwan from Limerick brilliant footballer never played a bad game and really when when you went up against Railway Cup opposition and I'm talking about the Leinsters I'm talking about the John McDermott's and the Niall Buckley's and the, the Brian Steins of their, of their era you go up the north and you play in the likes of the Toils and all these guys Paul McGrain's <coughs> any time I ever played with John Kwan for Munster or played against him for Kerry never had a bad game 
and that's consistent and never pull a dirty stroke and I, often once or twice I try to rough it up but I to my and that, that doesn't work anyway but that didn't work either by the way came out the wrong side of that as well but by far and away the most the most consistent and physically tough opponent that I've played against Yeah definitely so he was a, a brilliant footballer Dar you're going to stay with us uh, we're going to take the next break of the evening Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry Indeed, you're very welcome back here to Tara's Talk and those comments uh, are coming true to us. And uh, actually, I've mentioned this actually now, uh, Ballyhigh uh, Castle Golf Club, uh, open day is on the 9th of March, 10.30 to 12.30, free nine holes of golf with committee member. And that comes in from Dennis O'Regan uh, from the Ballyhigh uh, Golf Club. Um, Dara, you have your Celtic crosses and we said how, how difficult it was to, to win that All-Ireland uh, club uh, but the foundation for any player what, what does your what does your club mean to you um, oh, my club was, was was crucial to me because it gave me the platform obviously to play with Kerry um, and I was lucky enough Daryl Kinnead and myself came along together and Lee Moore O'Conn was our kind of our man that he he put up a structure in place back there I think Paddy was started out with him back in way back when and we were lucky enough to put together they put the foundations. We've been very lucky with our club behind that they've had very good underage teams. Actually, I'm involved with the, the guys that's under-16 team this year as a selector. But um, <clears throat> And it's my first year back with them in a couple of years because I, I wanted to get back involved in some capacity back there. I've been going to games back there and wanted to give something back. Um, and it's, you know, it's it's been... <clears throat> the club's been very good to me. And I enjoyed playing. I enjoyed playing with the club. And I like to think that I always gave my my my... my best for the club you know I always tried my best for the club and I enjoyed games there I mean because we at the time when we went through we we went through division one there for a number of years and there was a lot of good strong club teams there at various times and cracking games and cracking memories and we were lucky enough to have a strong team at the time and we had all come up through the club system ourselves and great great memories had by that and you know even small games West, to win West Kerry Championships to win West Kerry Leagues go on then and win intermediates juniors um, <coughs> was back in the guy looked um, a week ago last Saturday night actually and there was a get together for the 92 and 3 teams and met fellas I had met in years you know just have a pint and have a crack and have a chat and, and I had a conversation actually a couple of weeks ago with your former colleague and both at club level and county level into county level Derek and Aiden, he said the club would never go outside the club to get a manager they're, they're totally well, that was Dara's taking it anyway that you'd have to be they want homegrown homegrown manager whatever to come through the system to manage them yeah, and the fact that I suppose that we're Askael Gachama back there, you know, so it's it's um, it's important to us. Our, our culture, the culture, our language, and everything is very important to us, and it's it's um, it's our identity back there. And we're very proud of the fact that we're the, the closest club to New York in 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 Kerry or in the country, I should say. And you know the fact that we've been, you know, the, from a small club, a uh, very proud club, and the fact that I mean we've had Paddy as captain of Kerry and and Derek Kinnead as captain of Kerry. I mean for a small club. I mean, they've, the guys that have never been found wanting in terms of representing Kerry at all grades, <coughs> minor, under 21 and senior. And we have a huge tradition with that and we've been very, very proud of that over the years with the amount of all Ireland medal winners we've had back there. And uh, brotherly love or whatever you want to call it, but you two serious footballers beside you as well as the years went by. Uh, both Moss got on as one of the, the best wing backs of all time or best half backs and likewise Mark as even a, a man marker. It must be serious pride in the O'Shea household to have three lads on a Kerry team. Oh, we were lucky. I mean, again, we had um, <clears throat> we had Paddy, I suppose, as an inspiration from from um, a young age. Uh, my uncle Tom played for the Kerry Miners in the sixties. Uh, my father played for the Sem, and played for St Michael's in Estoll as well, along with the girl. That, so, and of course, we were related to the great Tom Long as well. So. It was always send in the blood. It well, we, there was no getting away from it, and we always wanted to look. It, it was never, it was never a burden. It was never a chore because we had games out in the backyard, and my brother Fergal was involved with the Gaelic for years as well. So we had great times, and I remember my father, Lord of Mercy, in one monster final. The Moss was just after coming on the panel in zero two, actually, and for the first time, I think Mark was on the Mark wasn't on the panel at that stage, but. Um, 
we were going to Killarney to play Cork and Killarney. He said to me, he said, um, he said, will you make sure Tomas behaves himself and conducts himself? Because Tomas had a bit of a temper. And I said, I said, geez, will you leave me alone? But I have enough to do to mind myself, not to mind Tomas. But we, um, it was, it was great. And it was only afterwards, I suppose, you look back in it and you look back at the, the memories. And I mean, we were lucky enough to, and it's a pity, I suppose, one of my regrets that, that my father was in the light to see the three of us winning and learning together. You know, it was, a, it would have been nice for him. But look, we, we've had great That times. was a very sad moment, Dara, then. It was very close to Munster final. It was against Cork as well. When your dad passed away, a lot of pressure on the family. That it, it was so close <coughs> to the game. That law always stand with you as uh, well. No, that was it was, it was, look, it, I mean, look, it, that, that I mean, people that loss comes to everyone's door. So I mean, we got on with it. We 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 never, you know, it wasn't a big thing to make a big deal of it at the time. But um, look, it was just like anybody. When your dad passed away, he passed away, and you'd miss him and whatnot. But it was just um, what he missed afterwards was was the big thing. And um, and we always we 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 still remember him, and we. Just, with great times at I'm sure he, he was looking from afar and uh, delighted and helped you along Sissy. Um Dara when you look at Kerry and look back you'd say I played against great players but you also played with brilliant players and I, I know you don't you played with so many teams and so many great teams but one guy that really stands out as well um Famously named him your your great uncle called him the pony, uh, the great Seamus Moynihan. Ah, uh, Seamus was was exceptional, and I mean Seamus. I remember my first time seeing Seamus in the flesh was playing for the the semi against Dingle back in a it was at the Dingle CBS at the time in back in Park and Ossig, and I was a bit young. I was a couple of years younger than Seamus, but we were all watching. But we at that time you'd, you'd tug out inside in, in the in the monastery at the time, and you'd you'd run out to the other field and out to Park and Ossig then to play the game. So there was an old green door there that you'd come through just up by Marion's Park there in Dingle. So all the team were coming out, and I think at the time Conor O'Donnell from Dingle was playing, and Brown right. Don Fitzgerald were playing in that team. But we were all waiting for the pony to come through the door anyway. And when we saw him coming, he was as wide as he was tall at that stage. He was a man at that stage, and as a matter of fact, I think he played in the Munster final in '92 there as well. But I always say it, and there was a you know there was a couple of players in 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 that I saw over the years, and Seamus being one of the three, I think that you look at Jack O'Shea, you look at Pat Spillane, and you look at Seamus Mine, and they were all right legged. None of the three of them have le- were left legged, but did you ever see any of them being blocked down? And That's true. it was just he had everything. He he had timing. He was so proud as a Kerry man. He's fielding his strength, and it's one thing that people never realise. And he was actually the best man ever to give a shoulder, and in the proper sense of a shoulder. His timing—he was never dirty, but his timing for a shoulder. Uh, he caught me when I came Killarney. I was coming in, soloing, and I thought I had the legs in him just to skip by, and he sucked me in. And I'd say he bounced. He hit me. He hit me so hard that it wasn't so getting the hit was bad enough but the ground was hard at the time so he got me a double whammy I hit the ground I bounced off the ground as well and the worst of it all then I spilled the ball he picked it up and took it off up the field and but he was he was even to the very last game I remember he was he was outstanding and a great bit of stuff and you know you'd you'd yeah, I remember one night we were playing we were playing um, a challenge game up the country up. we were playing our mare or something and I remember the, the half back then at the time was Seamus Mine and Liam Flaherty and Eamon Breen and I remember the Killarney car was late coming up and the two boys they used to get that nervous at all but the only time we'd see him nervous was when they thought that Seamus wasn't coming because he bought a balance the half back line and they said is there any sign of Seamus coming and, and that kind of thing and he was looking out the window to see was this fellow coming but no nah, he was a great complete footballer the complete footballer by far and away there was no one, I, I don't think there was anyone and you go up the country and you meet fellas he was the one fella they always keep mentioned Seamus Mine and he was outstanding yeah outstanding those comments coming through to us uh, Dara brought the whole package and will probably never be replicated again nice comment there hi Tim uh, best wishes to Dara he was a joy to watch and got Kerry out of jail many a time a great interview and that comes from Charles and uh, thank you Dara for all the excitement uh, Dara c- can we talk about Presently, Kerry, um, there's a freshness, a change from a man that you played with, Emma Fitzmaurice. That era is gone. Now it's Peter Keane working off um, material that come off a five in a row minor team. Um, things are pretty good at the moment. By Kerry, not to be carried away with it. Ah, uh, no. I mean, no one's getting carried away. I think. I think the most important thing we have to, and we spoke about it earlier, which is unusual. We have to be patient with these lads. Um, they're all good young players. I mean, look, it's it's. Are we? Uh, the worry is now. There will be a there will be a trip up along the way, and there will be a bump, and there won't. This won't be a smooth ride by any manner of means. And I mean, 
fit, I mean, yesterday now, for example, in Killarney, I was very impressed. The conditions were tough. Our younger players stood up. Um, there was mistakes made. They were fit towards the end. The bench proved again late in the game the couple of substitutions that Peter Kane did you know got played. us over the line yeah they got over the line but look I, I like the way they're playing they're, they're, I thought they were very good on the kickouts for, for Rory Began who's one of the better keepers in the country they they frustrated him three or four five what am I talking about five or six times to over the course of the game even as late as, as the beautiful score that Shawnee Shea got late in the game that was from pressure from the forwards created the created the, the you know the mistake and I like the way they're playing and I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed the last couple of games with him and I, I, I wish Peter Keane and his management the very best to look. Um, and as a Kerry supporter now, it's, it's enjoyable to watch and I hope they do. Look, they're young and I think we'll be patient. And take time. Dubs haven't gone away. Let's call a spade a spade. Tyrone are having a good run at the minute as well. So look, there's a lot to go. It's, it's the new format with the Super 8s is it's it's new to the teams and it it's you know it didn't go well for us last year for whatever reason whether we over overcooked or undercooked or whatever way it worked out it just didn't happen and for we us probably last. learned from it as well I hope so I hope so yeah so I'm looking forward to the new what team. about that middle diamond of the field guys uh, putting their hand up at the moment of course we have a, a trilly man here Jack Barry and uh, likewise they're trying out Mark Griffin yesterday Adrian <coughs> Spanan has, has been tried out there David Moore will be come back from injury so probably plenty of material there to work with we do we have lots of guys to come back David Warren to come back um, uh, James O'Donnell has to come back I mean he's due a, uh, a good run of, a good run of farm as well you know so we have lots to look forward to and I mean look it's, it'll be it'll be exciting for Peter Kane to have a full complement of players um, it's good that we have a panel I mean you look at the dubs yesterday they're losing a few bodies here and there injuries and there's a bit of depth to the panel so look and you have to have it for, for the super eights you have to have it it's a long long journey ahead uh, those comments coming through to us uh, I'm glad that Dara mentioned John Kwan. He was a great player, and that comes from Pat listening in Limerick. Thanks to Dara for the service he gave to Kerry football over the years, and that comes from Din Joe Cronin in Kilargan. Hi, Timmy. A uh, great to hear from Dara, one of the best, and a 100% give the best as well. Tim, uh, back west beyond Blinneville Bridge, Dara is one of our own, but uh, many is the time he broke our heart here in the West Kerry Championship. A great player for club, division, and county, and that comes from Kevin Fitz. Um, Dara, of course, your any any cheap house for sale? This, uh, <laughs> is there anything cheap nowadays? That that's you. You're applying your trade at that now. Yeah, we're we're established for uh, over twenty years in Tralee now. Um, and, uh, Daily O'Shea in Tralee. We're down Denny Street. we things have we went through a bad patch for a number of years with the with the economy going down. So what we did is we kind of we spread our wings and we have moved all over the county. We we go as far as Ballybunion, we go as far as down as far as Valencia and South Kerry, and obviously back to my own patch back in West Kerry we, we, we're fairly active back there as well back around Dingle and of course in Tralee so we, we've plenty of good value Tim don't be shy and um, call in to us I might, to, to that uh, Rosie yeah, I should be talking to Amber so I don't have an old colleague there's, uh, there's plenty of, I'd say there's plenty of you know bottle there and there's plenty of money there he might he might buy something from you and of course the football <laughs> did you know harm is either the great Darrow Shea coming to your door How no but it, look, it? It, opens, it, look, it opens it opens doors it, it opens doors and it, look, it, it gives you an opportunity to meet people and but look you have to perform and you have to Everyone expects a service now. We we think we provide a reasonable service, and we we you know we as I say we we're having a better run of of late. We'll say with the economy is improving a bit, so it's um it's all go it's all go systems go very busy and and um, long may it last. Yeah, definitely. So Dara, I want to thank you a lot for coming in here tonight on Terrace Talk. You were one of the greats. To be fair, I don't think we'd have won those All Irelands without you. You'll always say to the team effort, but you're probably one of the best midfielders of all time playing with the, the kingdom and a great Gaelic man as well. Um, well. We're coming to the end of our show and uh, those comments again about back west uh, well behind the Blinderville Bridge they all knew they're saying uh, Dara I want to thank um, Matthew Green who was on sound tonight uh, Eamon Hickson who produced of course uh, Jill St. John Harrington uh, is there as well and of course we are members of the Radio Kerry uh, Training Academy here as well many thanks to them uh, it's going to be a busy week coming up as well Kerry Hurlers are playing Westmeath down in Ennis uh, Radio Kerry will be there live to cover that so a busy few weeks coming up for us here on Terrace Talk uh, until next time, this is Tim Minehan saying goodbye.
for listening to this podcast from Radio Kerry. For more, go to radiokerry.ie slash podcasts or search iTunes using the keyword Radio Kerry.